Okay, uh, let's look at a freedom verse here. Uh, think about this principle. Through Christ, I can conquer any addiction. Do you think that's true? Ooh. You know what? We've got to make a decision. Do I believe the Bible or not? Here's the verse, Romans 8, 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Of course, that's talking about Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors. So, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Now, what we believe affects who we are and what we do. It affects how we live. And so you have, to, you have to settle in your mind and in your heart what you truly believe. And when that's so, when that's settled, when that's firm, then you can begin to live out the freedom. So you've got to, you've got to decide, do I believe this verse or not? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Yes, I believe that verse. And so I know that through Christ I can conquer, conquer any addiction. Because that's what the Bible says. And so I've just got to make up my mind at the outset I'm going to believe the Bible. All right, so let's get into our notes here now, if I can. And we're going to look at the, uh, the principles. This chapter here. If I can, uh, looks like Jim's up there working on something else. Can I have my clicker back here? <laughs> He's, it's, there we go, there we go. Thank you, that's perfect, perfect. Now I can run it from here. Okay, we're, this chapter in, uh, in your book is the 10 principles uh, to conquer stubborn habits. And I want to just remind you of the, the, the main thought here, and that is this that victory or freedom from addiction of any sort is given to you by Jesus. It's not earned. It's not worked for. You don't get it by working really hard for it or following 10 principles or 12 steps or whatever. You don't get free by earning it. You get free when Jesus says you are free. When Jesus gives you freedom, then you're free. And so... Once you have the freedom, then you need to learn how to live within the bounds of that freedom. Remember this, uh, this principle that every freedom has boundaries. Uh, and so freedom exists and it's marked by the boundaries. In this verse that we looked at several weeks ago, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Continue in the, in the work, the perfect law of liberty, that is the Bible, that is the law that is the boundary of freedom. Okay? So I'm free, but only up to the point of the boundary, just like any law that you follow in society today. Uh, I'm free... But at the moment I step over the boundary, the law, then I'm not free anymore. The police are going to come and they're going to haul me off in, in chains, okay? So freedom is, is uh, it's bounded, and we've got to learn what the boundaries are. And these principles that we're learning help us to understand some of these boundaries. Principle number one, we saw this. If God's against it, so am I. I've made a decision that when God shows me something in the Word, in the Bible... Then, and he shows me that it is right or wrong, then I'm going to follow that. If God's against it, if God says, no, don't cross that line, then I'm going to say, I'm not crossing that line. that line. That is a boundary that God has given to me. Principle number two, every sin has its origin in our hearts. And we're just reviewing now. And so if you're looking for these notes, you're thinking, wait, I can't write a list down. <laughs> okay, hang with me. I'm just reviewing. Principle number two, every sin has its origin in your heart heart. That is your thinker, your meditator. Okay? So you think it first. You think it first. And then the sin follows suit. It begins in your heart. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. It's what's inside here that's the problem. That's why this is, this is what needs to be taken care of. 
Uh, principle number three, it's easier to keep the heart clean than to clean it after it's been defiled. And that principle we all know only too well, don't we? Oh, man, if I had only uh, f taken care of this issue before I ever jumped into this sin. But now that I'm there, okay, it's going to be harder to clean it. Well, now, think about it from where you are now. You say, okay, I've already identified the sin, and I'm dealing with the sin now. How do you keep clean? By constantly cleaning your heart, constantly maintaining your heart. See, it's easier to take care of things here in your heart when they're small. And, and don't let them get out of hand. So you clean them while they're in your heart. And uh, it's easier to take care of it then than to wait until later. Number four, we cannot fight a fleshly appetite by indulging in it. Okay? One more is never going to make you happy. One more time, it's not going to do it. You're never going to be satisfied with doing it or eating it or drinking it or whatever one more time. It's not, it's not going to do it. It's not going to satisfy Okay, so know that principle uh, that you will not be satisfied by indulging in that appetite. Number five, small compromises lead to great disasters. Little sins lead to big sins. So uh, this is very similar to, to uh, every sin has its origin in our heart. When you take care of the, the thing, the little things in life, then you'll, you'll be able to take care of the big things in life. And maybe you've really hit a wall right now and you're struggling because of a big problem. Well, if you can learn to take care of the little things, the little things that God says to do, take care of those little things and then you'll be able to take care of the big things as well. That's a good principle that we took time with last time as well. Number six, and this is where we are tonight, Principle number six, page 130 in your notes. Those who do not love the Lord will not help us serve the Lord. This is so true. And we're going to explore this just a little bit tonight, and I hope it will be a help to you. Those who do not love the Lord will not help us serve the Lord. Why is this important? Well, because true freedom comes from Jesus. And if you want to find that freedom and get that freedom and maintain that freedom, then you need to know Jesus. You need to have a relationship with Jesus. You need to serve Jesus. And it is only people who are serving Jesus that are going to help you down that path to serve Jesus. Uh, don't be confused here thinking, well, you know, I can just have this relationship and that relationship. And even though they're not godly people, I know, I know that they're not godly people. And it's okay. It's not going to hurt me. It's not going to... But you know what? You're going to find that you're being influenced by those relationships. Those who do not love the Lord will not help me serve the Lord. Okay, a couple, um, couple Bible verses here. And this is not in your notes. This verse, Proverbs 12, uh, or I'm sorry, Proverbs 13, verse 20. Uh, and, uh, and you can check it out if you want in the Bible. It says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Okay, jot that down in your notes. Proverbs 13, 20, and check it out later. If you want to be destroyed, then be a friend of fools. Hang out with foolish people. Do foolish things with foolish people, and you'll be in that, that category, and you'll be destroyed with them. But if you want to be wise, if you want to do what's right, if you want to have victory in your life over sin and over temptation, then you need to make sure you're hanging around wise people. Why is it that we come to church? Why is it that we have friendships here? Because we want to be around wise people. Why is it that even in our, our daily journal that we work through, there's a place there, time with God's teachers, uh, or, or uh, a time to gain godly wisdom. Why? So that we can think, okay, is this relationship going to be helpful to me or not? You know, who am I learning from? Walk with wise men and you'll be wise. Walk with fools and you'll be destroyed. Um, look at this verse, John 15, 19. Jesus spoke these words the night before he was crucified. He's talking to his disciples. He says, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, 
But I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. I, I don't like this uh, principle necessarily. I, I don't like being hated by the world, okay? I, I don't like the idea that just because I want to know Jesus and follow Jesus, that some people will not like me. In fact, they're going to hate me for it. But I better get used to it. And I better just make up my mind that it's worth it to follow Jesus. And those who do not love the Lord will not help me serve the Lord. And you know what? If they're not going to help me serve the Lord, maybe I'm better off without him. I'm better off without him. I don't need him in my life because they're, they're trying to pull me away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus told his disciples, you're not from the world. I've called you out of the world. I've made you special. I've made you unique. You are my child. And because of that, the world looks at you and they, and they think, oh man, what's wrong with that person? Why do they act that way? How comes they can't have fun like we have fun? Yeah, while well, they go have their, their hangover and they're throwing up in the toilet I'll tell you why I can't have fun like you can. <laughs> because, because I belong to Jesus Christ. And he gives me joy and peace in my life. I don't want that joy. If, that, if you think that's joy, you can have it. You know? <laughs> I don't want that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a child of God and live for him. Okay, point number one. Point number one. If I act like my old friends, they will accept me. When I act like Christ... They will reject me. Okay, if you, if you act like the world, then there's no difference between you and the world. And you're going to get along with all those worldly people who, who are stuck in their addictions and, and can't get over sin. You're going to fit right along with them if you act like them. So act like the old friends and they'll accept you. Now, this is the danger. When God saves us and we... And, and our lives begin to change, our relationships begin to get a little strained because the, the friends that we had before start to see the change in us and they, and, they, and they don't like that change. And we want that friendship because we really enjoyed the times that we had with them. And so now we've got to think, okay, if I still want to have the good times with my friends and maintain this friendship, then I'm going to have to make some compromises. And we start to make compromises here and there, little compromises, because we want, to, we want to be friends. It doesn't work the other way around. They don't start acting nice just to make you happy. It doesn't work that way. You're going to make compromises to make them happy, because you're the one that's changed. And so if you act like the old friends, then they'll accept you. But if you're going to act like Christ, they're going to reject you. And you've got to be okay with that. Because those who do not love the Lord will not help me serve the Lord. I'm not saying we're out to make enemies of people and, and, and not be friendly. That's not the point. But this is a natural result of serving the Lord. People just aren't going to want to hang around you like they did before. I got a couple verses here. First Peter chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Again, this is not in your notes. You might want to jot these verses down. These are great. Uh, let me look it up in, in my Bible here because uh, I can't read it that far away. On the <laughs> okay, does that mean I'm getting old? Wait a minute, <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. Okay, it's just small print, that's all, that's all. Okay, so I'm looking at 1 Peter chapter 4 and uh, verses 3 and 4. This is what it says. For the time past of our life, may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Boy, that, that's true. We used to be this way. We used to be living in that, that sinful kind of lifestyle, walking in, the, in the, the lusts and excesses of wine and, and all of those things. We used to live that way. But then God changed our lives. And now what happens is they, the people we used to hang around with, think that we're strange. 
because we don't run with them in the same excess of riot anymore. And now they speak evil of us. Oh, you got religion, huh? Oh, you found Jesus, huh? And, and they start to mock us as a result. They, they speak evil of us because they think we're strange. Embrace it. It's okay. It's okay to be strange because those who do not love the Lord will not help me serve the Lord. And, and if they don't want what I have, then maybe I'm better off without them because I want my life to change. I want to be different. I want to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, and I want freedom. And someday, maybe they'll come around to, to the place where they realize that they want what I've got. But until they come to that place, I may just have to break ties with them altogether and let them go. Because those who do not love the Lord will not help me serve the Lord. Point number two is this. My old friends would lay the snare and wait for me to fall. It's true. It's true. Uh, they, they, they feel guilty when they're around you because your life has changed and they know their actions are not right. And you've got the boldness to say so and to actually change your life. And so they feel guilty when they're around you. Oh, you're not looking down your nose on them. You're not living this holier-than-thou life. It's just a natural result because you've made changes in your life. And now they feel guilty. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to try to trip you up. Because they're going to try to prove that you're still just as bad as you used to be. They're going to try to prove that you never did change. That this was just a phase. Because they don't want to believe that they might be held accountable to God as well. They're going to try to trip you up. And that's why it's so important to remember, those who do not love the Lord will not help me serve the Lord. What is their relationship with God? If they don't have a relationship with God, then they're going to try to trip me up. It's just going to happen. You say, well, my, not my friends. They wouldn't do that to me. Maybe not maliciously. But, but they might do that even unintentionally because they feel guilty. They feel guilty, and so they might try to trip you up. The verse that you have there in your notes, Proverbs 24, 15. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. Why is that proverb written like that? Because the natural tendency of those that are living in sin is to set a trap for those that are living righteous lives and trip them up. <laughs> if, I don't know if you... If you uh, follow much on social media or Facebook or things like that, but people are all the time trying to bait people into reacting in wrong ways on social media. Why? They want you to react wrong. They want to prove that you are not following Christ. That's what they want to prove. And you've got to be careful. Don't, don't fall prey to the trap that they lay for you because they feel guilty about your stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. Point number three. When you get right and stay right, the old friends will leave. They will. Now, if you get right but you don't stay right, then they're not going to leave. But if you get right and stay right, they will naturally leave. You don't have to talk to them and say, you know what, we just can't be friends anymore. You don't even have to do that. All you have to do is live a righteous life and love the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're going to distance themselves from you. They're going to make some decisions to distance from you. They're going to walk away from you. Uh, John 3, verse 20. This is not in your notes, but you might jot this down. John 3, verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. See, as a righteous person living out the principles of the Bible and allowing Jesus to live his life through you, you now are shining the light of the gospel. 
you see the fruit of the Spirit, the evidence of God's Holy Spirit working in your life is shining out here. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. All these things are, are now shining out of your life. The light of the gospel is shining. And those that do not want the truth, that are living a lie and that are living in sin, don't want to be around the light. And so what do they do? They run. They're going to go, they're going to, they're going to distance themselves from you naturally. You can show them love. You can reach out to them in love. But they will probably be distancing themselves from you until they make a decision to come to the light as well. It's naturally going to happen. Let it happen. It's okay. Well, I want my friends. You got friends right here. You're not going to be alone. You're not going to be without friends. You've got them here. And, uh, and there are godly people that would love to be your friend and help you to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. So just be ready for it. When you get right and stay right, uh, they're going to they're gonna leave. They're going to leave, and that's okay. i got a couple more uh, thoughts here. Uh, let's just think about this here. And, and uh, again, this is not in your notes. If you wanted to jot some of these things down, that's just fine. We're going to be looking at Psalm 1 here in a minute. And uh, some of you have it already memorized. But there are two separate peoples in the world. The world is, is categorized biblically into two groups. And the two groups are not races or anything like that. Boy, if you're watching the news right now, you'd think the world was divided into either Democrat and Republican or blacks and whites. That's not it. But the Bible does categorize people in two ways, godly and ungodly. We could say saved or lost. There are two distinct groups of people, those that are on their way to heaven and those that are on their way to hell. They're very different groups of people. It doesn't matter their skin color. It doesn't matter the language that they speak. It doesn't matter where they live in the globe. It, none of that matters. It doesn't matter what culture they grew up in. They're either saved or they're lost. And those two groups of people are clearly distinct and clearly separate. And so if you are in the category of being saved and godly, don't be surprised when those that are ungodly want to distance from you because they are in a different category and it's a natural thing for them to distance themselves. So the Christians, the world, two separate categories. Disciples of Jesus, sinners, those that are, that are stuck and bound in sin, separate group of people. Those that are saved, those that are scornful, that are, that are trying to mock the saved, separate categories those that are righteous and those that are unrighteous. We see all that in Psalm 1. Okay, remember Psalm 1? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. See that? You've got ungodly, you've got sinners, you've got scornful. They're in one category, and you're in the other. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Those that are in the godly category love the Bible. They love the Lord. They meditate on the things of the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Oh, I like that one. You know, <laughs> I want to prosper. Sign me up. Well, not if you're in the category of the, of the sinner, of the scorner. You're not, going to be, you're not going to be prospering if you're in that category. It continues on. The ungodly are not so. Exactly right. They're in a different category. They're like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Uh, their, their, their life has little value. And, and it's just taken away with the latest fads, the latest winds of the season. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. You're not going to stand before God and be righteous, and withstand that judgment if you're in the wrong category. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. A couple thoughts from this. First of all, there's a, there's a progression 
of sin that we see in this. You're walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Okay? This is taking advice from those that do not have a respect for God's word. Those who do not live a godly life. You take counsel from them. You walk in the way of the ungodly. You say, okay, how am I going to fix my life? Well, let me think here. Uh, I'm going to go to Books a Million, and I'm going to check the, the, uh, the book aisle that speaks to the issue that I'm dealing with, and I'm going to find a solution for my problem. Now, if you're finding a book that does not point to the Word of God, you are taking counsel from the ungodly. That's just a fact. That's a fact. And it doesn't seem like a wrong thing. You know, there's a lot of self-help books out there, and there's plenty of things that you can go to to get advice. But it starts that way, just walking in the counsel of the ungodly, then it progresses to standing in the way of sinners. No longer are you just kind of perusing, but now you're standing, standing around. And you're spending more and more time in the way of sinners. And, and it's not just somebody who's ungodly, but now it's somebody who is outright sinning. And you know they're sinning, but you still kind of hang around with them. Then eventually you sit in the seat of the scornful. You just sit down and take part. As they scorn, they scorn everybody, they scorn the Christians, they scorn godly people, and you end up doing the same thing with them. There's a progression of sin that happens here. Why? Because of the wrong associations. Those who do not love the Lord will not help me serve the Lord. So make a decision. I'm not going to hang around those who do not love the Lord because I don't want to fall into that. But the flip side is that God promises the prosperity and the blessings. See, blessed is the man that walketh not, right? So what are the, what are the blessings? What, is the, uh, the, what are the results or, or um, uh, how do we get these blessings? Well, first our counsel must come from God's word and his people. Take advice from this book, not from those who have no respect for it. And then delight in what God wants for us. Delight in it. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. So you, you take pleasure in it. Say, oh man, I gotta, I gotta go to RU tonight. Oh, I gotta read my Bible. Oh, I, hey, maybe we should take delight in it. Maybe we should say, Praise God, I get to go to RU tonight, and I don't have to go hang out with the, uh, with the worldly crowd and, uh, and, and ruin my life somewhere. Praise God for that, you know? <laughs> delight in what God wants you to do. When you delight in that and take your advice and counsel from God's word, from God's people, then you'll see the blessing of God in your life. These are the the, the blessings that God promises to those who avoid the wrong people. Because principle number six says, those who do not love the Lord will not help me serve the Lord. So you've got to choose. You must choose. See, if you totter back and forth between Christian friends and worldly friends, then eventually you won't be winning any battles for the Lord. And both groups, both groups will see your hypocrisy. They'll see your disloyalty. The worldly crowd, they're going to say, oh yeah, you, you know, he's one of those Jesus people. And when you go to church, because you're playing both sides of the, f- the fence, people at church are going to, they're going to be thinking, man, I don't know what's wrong with them. Why do they keep hanging out with the wrong kind of people? Why do they keep falling into sin like this? Both groups are going to see your disloyalty. Both groups are going to see the problem. So you've got to, you've got to make a decision. Either I will hang out with people and I will make friends with people and I will associate with people who love the Lord so that I can follow the Lord and serve the Lord or forget it. You don't want to be in that category. So make a decision and be okay with the decision. 
And remember this, if you want victory and you want to be victorious in your life and have victory over sin and temptation, then remember those who do not love the Lord will not help me serve the Lord. And I'm okay without them. I'm okay without them. God will give me friends and give me people to associate with. I don't have to worry about that. And that is principle number six. A good principle. A solid principle. Don't let the world drag you back. Don't let them do it. Don't let them do it. Cut ties with the wrong kind of friends and God will bless you for it. All right, that's all we've got time for. So let's bow our heads and pray and then we'll get out of here. Thank you, Father, for what you've shown us tonight. Lord, please help us. Help us to realize that we need a new friendship, a new category of friends. We need a new life. And I pray that you would help us to see that and understand that. Lord, I pray that through this biblical principle, we would see our lives prospering and victorious because we've made a decision to cut ties with those who do not love the Lord. Lord, help us. Help us to follow your word and to be free as we understand the principles here. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.